welcome back to the Tournament of Stitches 2020. In this video, we will be discussing sections five and six of the crochet version. By this point in the Tournament of Stitches, you should have completed sections one through four on your scarf or infinity cowl, depending on which one you decide to make this project in the very end. If you have not gotten started yet, it is not too late to join. Simply click on the link that is in the video description box right down there below. I'll even add a little link right there to that I button so that way you can follow along. When you click the link that takes you to the main blog post where you can find out all of the details regarding the Tournament of Stitches, links to previous Tournament of Stitches, the full materials list, and at the bottom of that post you will find direct links to each section of this event. Once you have sections one through four complete, you could come back to this video and join in the fun. For those of you who have already completed your homework, you should have a piece that looks a little something like this. I don't know about you, but man, I am loving this piece so far. So many fun mosaic stitches all work together. And I don't know what color all of you chose, but I am digging this VIP and sweet and creme de mint. In the Marley's Minions Facebook group, many of you are sharing pictures of your works in progress. And on Instagram, I'm finding them because you're using hashtag Marley Bird or hashtag Tournament of Stitches. Please keep it up. They are so inspirational and motivating. I love seeing all of your excitement, all of the colors you're using, and so many of you are making both the knit version and the crochet version. It's very awesome. Since your work is completed up through section four, you're ready to begin section five, which is uh, technique wise, just like the previous sections, but it has a different shape. I want to take a minute and let's take a look at the chart and the diagram for this set of instructions. Let's take a look at section five's chart to begin with. And just like all of the previous sections, we begin with row one and row one begins with color A and single crochets all the way across. And then we do that for eight rows total. It's on row nine, we change colors to B and we will work two rows of single crochet. So one for row nine and then one for row 10. It's on row 11 where the mosaic technique really comes into play, just like all of the other sections. One thing I want to point out is that at the beginning of this motif, there are long stretches where we don't have a lot of the setups for those double crochets that need to be worked down. But as we continue back and forth along the motif, we will begin to see more and more of the long double crochets worked up in this section, okay? The other thing I wanna point out is as we take a look at section six, can you see right here, you know what, let's do this. I'm going to, I'm going to fold this little piece of paper and here we go. When section five is complete, after row 38, right there, we begin with row one with color A once again, and we do the eight rows with color A, two rows with color B, and we jump to um, color C for row 11. What I want you to notice here is as you're looking, can you see down here in section five, see how it looks like it comes down, across, and then up? And then see in section six, I'm gonna pull this down. It looks like it continues up, comes around and like this. This is what I mean about these two sections. They sort of mirror each other, okay? They, they work with one another in tandem. And so I really wanted these to be side by side. So this is really the center of your scarf. This section right here would be the center of your scarf. You have this for section five, this for section six, and they work really well together. I love the look of this giant stitch pattern right here. That's why I decided to make this video a section five and section six video. It only makes sense. When we look at the crochet diagram, it'll make even more sense because they just look like the stitches have been flip-flopped with one another. Let's take a look. Move this one out of the way and bring in these. All right, so let's look at section five to begin with. 
and this is the section five stitch diagram. And you can see where the long double crochets, they start where there's only three on the first one that we drop down. So it's when we get to row 13 that we do the long double crochet right there, two rows below. And then as you continue on, they increase to get this stitch pattern, okay? These are gonna give us our vertical lines that we are seeing when we look at this. So these vertical lines here are created by doing those long double crochets. Can you see that? And the same thing when we look at section six, it's as if we took five and we just went like this. Can you see? You see what I mean there? So it's the same thing only in reverse. And so we start off with few and then we get to quite a bit along here, but then we come back down and you finish this entire motif with those three long double crochets, which is exactly the way we started number five. Can you see that? So this is number five, this is number six, and if I were to take number five and literally just turn it upside down, it would be just like number six. Can you see that? Okay. The cool thing here is there's nothing new as far as technique. We're still going to chain over the skip stitches just like before and then when we use the next color when it's time to work stitches over those chains it'll be that long double crochet that i was talking about or the double crochet two rows below into that skip stitch nothing new there at all so everything you've learned thus far is the same it's just now we're learning a new stitch pattern now, in the last video, I worked through the entire section with you guys, and some of you liked it, some of you thought the video was too long, so I don't know what the right answer is, but I am gonna do this. I'm gonna get started on this square so that I can get all of you going. You can follow along with the stitch diagram or the written instructions, either one should work for you, and I will let you decide whether you wanna get started and continue on with me in the video, or if you wanna get started and go on your own merry way. All right, let's go ahead and get started with section five. Get your homework and let's begin. Here at the start for me, I am going to grab my post-it notes. And if you remember correctly, I like to block two rows off at a time. So I'm gonna block off my two rows, move this up. But before I do that, I am gonna take a minute because I am using the diagram here. I'm gonna count how many single crochets I have between this chain two section and this chain two section. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I have 16 there. That way I don't have to count later. And over here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So I have 10 right there. Okay. Now I can grab my work. I've already got my color C on my hook ready to begin. All my ends are woven in because I am a good girl and got all that done beforehand. Uh, those of you who are struggling with keeping the end part here all together, what I do is I fold it up and I, I keep folding it on itself so that way as I turn I try and keep it folded up so that way I can maintain control of all of the extra fabric I have going on. Okay, so I'm at the point where I need to chain one and turn so I am on row 11 so I start off with a single crochet in the first single crochet and then I will chain two skip a single crochet and now I will single crochet in the next 16 stitches would be 16. I will chain two, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next 10. Two, 
chain two, skip a stitch, single crochet in the last two. Chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, it does not matter. And then as I work back, just like before, I will single crochet into each stitch, and then I will chain the same number of chains across the chain area as I did in the previous row. So that's a chain two, and then I come over here to these singles. And you guys know this by this point, you do this on every single wrong side row. You will always single crochet into the stitches and chain over the chains that are created. Because you know how to do this, I think this will be the only wrong side row I actually show you. For the other ones, I think I will do a time lapse dissolve <laughs> so that way you don't have to watch all of the wrong side rows unless there is something important I feel like you need to see um, but for the most part I don't think there is so I'm just going to cruise through this one these first several rows are very easy on this particular motif and then the last several rows of the next section are very easy just because it's a lot of just single crochets not very many chain twos but as we get to the meat of this motif, that's when the chain twos really start to get used quite a bit. Don't forget that in the last stitch, you always want to change colors. So drop your old color, pick up your new color, and pull through on that last pull through of that single crochet. Chain one and turn. All right. Doesn't look like much so far, just like always, but I will grab my diagram, take my post-it note. I'm gonna move it up two rows. Again, I wanna remind you, I move it up so that way I can see the stitches I'm supposed to be working into underneath here, okay? I'll take a second here and once again, I'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I do this on all charts when I see there's a large section there that I can't like quickly just with my eyes count like five or seven real fast. If it's more than that, I always have to pause and count and just take a note on the pattern. So you could do this for other patterns too that you uh, try and follow along with. All right, so this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, okay. And away we go. Make sure I have my color B. I've already done my chain one. So I start off here with my single crochet into that first stitch. And here's where I do my first long double crochet. So I yarn over my hook, go in front of those chains down to the skipped stitch, go into that stitch and make sure I'm in front of those chains and work my double crochet. And it's that easy. Now I'm going to chain two skip a stitch, single crochet in the next 14. So there's one, And 14. I will chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet, two rows below in front of those chains, chain two, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next eight, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet, two rows below into that skip stitch in front of those chains, chain two, 
skip a stitch, single crochet in that last single crochet. Chain one and turn. This is my wrong side row, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dissolve. <laughs> in that last stitch, don't forget to change colors. Chain one and turn. We are starting to get those stitches put into place. We're gonna start getting those rows of colors, those vertical rows, vertical columns, I guess, maybe that's the better phrase. All right, so let's get our chart here. Ooh, all my papers are falling. And, or not chart, diagram. And move it up to once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay. Alrighty, so we have color C on our hook chained one already and I'm ready to get started. So I single crochet in the first, chain two, skip one, double crochet two rows below, and the next one over, chain two, skip one, single crochet 12, Chain two, double skip one, double crochet two rows below. Chain two, skip one, double crochet two rows below. Um, okay, and then single crochet seven, so one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below. Single crochet in that last single crochet. Chain one and turn. Wrong side row. Just going to single crochet in my stitches and make sure I do my chains over my chains. That last stitch, make sure you change colors. Chain one and turn. See what we got here. There we go. Our lines are really starting to take shape. So we can grab our diagram, move our post-it note up. Two rows. So we're getting ready to begin row 17. I have color B back on my hook. And away we go. So I single crochet in the first, get my yarn over here. I'm almost done with my color B right here. This is probably the last uh, motif that I'll be able to use this ball to get the new ball of yarn going. All right, so there's my long double, chain two, skip one to my double keep calling it a long double, but you guys know what I mean, right? I mean, it's just a double crochet, but it's two rows below. So I guess in my mind, I think of it as a long double. And then chain two, skip one. We're gonna single crochet. 
I didn't count this time, but I'm going to single crochet to one stitch before those um, chains right there. See my yarn inching up on me. Let's see. All right, so this is one stitch before those chains. So I will chain two, skip one, do my double crochet two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet two rows below. Chain two, skip one, single crochet over to one stitch before those chains again. There we are, there's the chain, so I would chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below. You guys get what I mean there, right? So. Because I didn't count, let me see here, because I didn't count my number of single crochets on my diagram, I can deduce, is that the right word? That if I work these single crochets over to one stitch before these chains right here, see that stitch right before these chains, then I know I can chain two over top of that stitch, and then this will be my double crochet, two rows below. Can you see that? All right, so I just did my double crochet two rows below, and I chain two, skip one, double crochet two rows below, chain two, skip one, single crochet in that last single crochet, chain one, and turn. Wrong side row, so I simply single crochet in each one of the stitches and chain the same number of chains over top of the chains I created in the previous row. In that last stitch, don't forget to change colors. Chain one and turn. You can see here, everything's really starting to take shape. We're starting to get our vertical columns, I think that's what they should be called, okay? So they're all starting to really take shape here. We have our horizontal lines here. These are our vertical columns all starting up. So let's take a look at the diagram again here. And this is where I would take this off and I would move this up right up here like so. And you can see that in this section, you know, we're starting to increase the number of chain twos that we get and so on and so forth. So I am on, I'm on row 19, but I'm going to move my post-it note. I'm going to take a look at this here real quick. <clears throat> As you continue up, you can see that the, the double crochets begin to increase as the chain twos increase, of course, because every time there's chain twos, we're going to have double crochets. The next time we use the same color, um, as the row below those double crochets. No, let me say this again. Every time there's a chain two, we're going to have double crochets the next time we get to the color that is below those chain twos. So we keep increasing those out, right, up here until we get to row 27. Look at row 27, 25 and 27. So in this section here, we have almost an entire row of chain twos. Look, there's only two single crochets side by side there and two single crochets side by side there. Same thing for row 26, obviously. But when you get to row 27, look at this. It's chains, double crochet, chains, double crochet, chains, double crochet, chains, double crochet. Three chains, double crochet, chain, so there are no single crochets on row 27. 28, obviously there's single crochets into each one of the stitches. 
And then on 29, once again, we are not doing any single crochets. It's it's well, but the single crochet at the start and the end, I'm sorry, that's the same thing here. We always begin and end with singles. But on 29, we have the, the double chains, double chains, double chains, double chains, two doubles that will go down here over top of those chain threes. Um, chains, double, chains, double, chains, double, chains, double, chains, two doubles over top of those, or in front of, I should say, those chain threes down here, two rows below. Two chains, double, two chains, double, two chains, double, two chains, double, two chains, single. You see what I mean? So when you get back, when you get through this section, so it's really, let's see, this section right here, it's a lot of, lot of stuff going on. Not a whole lot of singles happening when we're on the rows going this way, but um, there's singles obviously coming back, but there's, there's a lot of action happening here. But then you can see we get to row 31 and we have very few chains. You see those? Very few chains because we are, we are stopping our vertical lines right here once we get past 31. We're keeping our vertical lines right here in the center. And remember, that's because we're keeping those vertical lines to create that really cool shape. Let's take a look at the chart to see what I mean. If I can pull the chart in here. Here we go. So right here, this is what we're creating, and it's right here on row 31. This is when we're doing these doubles right here, right? Those doubles, you see those? Double, 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 double. And then we no longer have these vertical lines going up here. Can you see that? There's, they're not going up, except here. These are continuing. These ones are just doing the horizontal lines. Okay, so those are just our single crochets. So that becomes very easy for us as we look at the chart because those are just the single crochets here. The only big action we'll see is right here and that is so we can maintain these vertical lines. Does that make sense? I really want you to not only just follow the pattern the way it's written, of course that's how you do all patterns, but I want you to understand why the fabric you are creating is getting created. I want you to understand why you are no longer doing those chains on the outside sections, but you are in the middle section. And that's where using the diagram and the chart and the words all really work together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and work up until I get to row 25, because it was on row 25 that I mentioned right here that things really start to get a bit crazy. So I'm gonna get up here to row 25, and let's work through these rows together. I want you to go ahead and do the same thing. Meet me back here and we will get started on row 25. And we're back. I am on row 25. You can see I have my vertical lines all taking shape here. Um, everything's looking really good so far. I can bring my stitch diagram back into play and I am going to move my post-it note up two rows and we will follow along right here with row 25. Now remember, on this row, the only two single crochets I'll do on 25 are right here and right here. Okay, so there's a lot of chain twos and double, chain twos and double, chain twos and double, and then chains. All right, so let's get started with this one. So once again, I have color B back on my hook. Make sure everything's in place here. Did I chain one? I didn't chain one yet, so I gotta chain one. Chain one, all right, and I'm set. So I will start off with my single crochet, and my next stitch here, I can see chain, so I automatically know that I have to do my double crochet two rows below. It's gonna be hard here to keep track, so we wanna make sure that we do all the chain twos between these doubles that we need to. So we'll skip one and do a double crochet two rows below. Chain two, skip one, double crochet two rows below. Chain two, skip one, double crochet two rows below. And then chain two, 
skip one. These are the two single crochets that we need to do. Sorry, ah, something on my nose itched. Okay, so I did my two singles. Now I'm at chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, all right, and then we're gonna skip one. This is our other set of two single crochets. And then we're back to the chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, Skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, and with a single crochet. Woo! All right, so one thing we need to remember here with all of these chain twos, our work, look, my work wants to fan out a little bit, so I do need to make sure that I'm keeping correct tension to bring these stitches in, because I don't want this section to fan out, I want it to stay even. And my final border, after I block everything, should make sure everything is nice and evened out. But that is something I want you to pay attention to. I'm gonna chain one and work my wrong row back now, and then we will be ready for row 27. So I will chain one and turn my work. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Did you see the yarn like go flying? It's like a fish coming out of a pond. <laughs> All right, now we go. Don't forget to change colors on that last stitch of the row. And turn your work. Here we go. All right, so here's where we are. Let's go ahead and move our post-it notes up so that we are ready to go here. And we are on row 27. I'm reading this direction. And as I get to this section here where the, these two single crochets are, I have chain threes over those, okay? So I have a lot of chain twos and the double crochets, but I don't have any single crochets this time because I'm gonna chain three over those uh, two single crochets from the previous row, all right? Okay, I have color C on my hook, I need to chain one and begin. So I start off with my single crochet, I begin and end with a single crochet. And I chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet in front of those chains. And here we go, we're just going to do this down the row. Skip a stitch, double crochet, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet, it's like a fuzz in there. All right, and then these are the two single crochets. This would be where I chain three, skip those two singles, double crochet into that next skipped stitch, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next, chain two, 
skip a stitch, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next. These are the two single crochets, so I will chain three, skip those two, double crochet in the next skipped stitch, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next. You guys know when I say that right, that means two rows below. I mean by now, I'm guessing you understand what I mean when I'm saying all of this. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet, whoops, and finish with a single. Chain one, turn, and work our way back. This row, it's crazy because the, the previous row, that blue right there, we are not working into it at all except at the start and at the end until the following row when stitches are worked into there. So it looks so goofy right now without anything worked into it. But it does get worked into, so don't fret. The end of the row, don't forget to change colors. Chain one and turn. All right, so it does look goofy. Nothing's connected really, but it will get connected this next row. So don't worry about that. Bring this back here, move this up, right up there. So we are on row 29. So we're gonna work across. And when we get to where those chain threes are, we'll be doing those two double crochet side by side, two rows below into those single crochets we did on 25 and 26, okay? It's actually this, we actually work into the single crochet we did on 26, but you get what I mean, right? Okay, so let's put that back. Pull this in, I already have my chain one, and I'm ready to go. So I start off here with my single and then my double crochet, continuing on with that vertical column there. You guys see that, that nice vertical column right there that was created? And my yarn is so close to being done with this color. Okay, so I did my long double, so I chain two, skip a stitch, work into that skip stitch down there, chain two, Skip a stitch, work into that skip stitch down there. Chain two, skip a stitch, work into that skip stitch down there. Chain two, skip a stitch. These are our side by side double crochets, so make sure I get both of those. That's the first one. And there is the second one. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain two. You should have four double crochets between this side by side two doubles and this one we're getting ready to do right now. So we're gonna do two 
double crochet side by side, two rows below right here. Okay, almost done. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet. 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 Chain two, skip a stitch, single into that last single. Okay. See that? See what I mean about the horizontal lines and the vertical lines? Now you can see here, I didn't keep my stitches very tight, so they're starting to bow out a little bit. So I'm going to really pay attention to that as I'm working across here and make them come in a little bit more. Um, so make sure you're doing the same thing here. You don't want that to bow out way too much, okay? So I'm going to turn my work and work my way back. You guys know the drill, change your color, that last stitch, and then turn your work. You can see this is what we're starting to look like. Again, it's not attached, but it will be attached after the next row is completed. Okay, so we're going to grab our work here, grab our diagram, I should say, and move our post-it note up. We are on row 31. So row 31, this is the one I was telling you about that as we're working across, look, I'm not creating any more chain twos. I'm actually going to be single crocheting into uh, the single crochet. So that will be nice. But then I have chain twos that I'm creating right here because this is where I have the vertical lines continuing. These are going to become just the horizontal lines. Okay? Alrighty. We are in the home stretch, people home stretch. I have color C on my hook. I've already chained one, so here we go. I'm going to single crochet the first two. Now I do a double, two rows below, and I just keep working across here. So there's the double, and then I single in the next. Double, two rows below. Single in the next, double two rows below, single in the next, double two rows below, and then I will be single crocheting in the top. This is those were the side by side two doubles, so I'm single crocheting in the single crochets that were worked into that. And then here's where I'm going to continue my vertical lines here. So I start off with my double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below, chain two, skip one, double crochet, two rows below. So right now I have one, two, three chain twos. I need four of them, so I'm gonna chain two, double crochet, two rows below. Okay, that is right here. That's what's going to be continuing up for me. So now I will just be single crocheting into, make sure I don't skip, I almost skipped that one. I have two right there, so I wanna make sure I get one right there one right there. Now I continue on making sure I get my double crochets in front of those chains that are created and get my singles worked into my singles. Goodness gracious. Mm. 
Okay. As I set this down, you can see it's really starting to kind of pull its way back in again because we have these single crochets in play. There's not a lot of the chain twos going on. So this square is really going to just look so cool. And can you see that because we have done these vertical lines as extensions of the horizontal, even though we created these doubles sort of on a diagonal here, we get a really cool square look. Can you see what I'm saying here? Can you see as you follow the path of the pencil, we get this really cool square look. I just, I love the way that turns out. Okay, so I'm going to work my way back with single crochets on each of the stitches and make sure I do my chain twos in those sections, okay? The end of the row, change your color, do your chain one. That's what your work looks like so far. Let's go ahead and take a look at the diagram once again and move our post-it note and we can see here we are going to be continuing on this vertical line here so that's why these chain twos have to be in place so that way when we get to that same color again on row 35 we can drop down and work that double into that single right there okay so for this row it's very similar to the one we just did in the sense of we are only going to be doing these chains and doubles right here in this section here. All out here, these are all just single crochets, okay? So you could sit here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're going to have 11 single crochets there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 over there, okay? And we have Oh, what color is this? This is color B is back on the hook, B for blue, and away we go. So I've chained one already, so I will go ahead and get my 11 single crochets in place. There's my 11. This is where I start my chain twos and then my double in front of those chains, two rows below. Chain two, skip one, double into that skip stitch, two rows below. Chain two, skip one, double. Chain two, skip one, double. Chain two, skip one. I don't have another double, but I have a single here. So I had to skip one and single. So I should have one, two, three, four, five, chain two sections. And now I will single crochet all the way to the end, which should get me 12 single crochets based on the diagram and with the stitches we just counted. Chain one, turn your work, and you know the drill. We are so close to the end now, people. All right, so I'm gonna chain one, turn my work. You can see the lovely stitches. Bring our diagram in. This will be, let's see, we just did that. We're right here. Oh, that didn't go on very well, did it? Okay, so I'm right up here. I'm on row 35. I have color C on my hook. This will be the last time I use color C, I think. 
And so I chained one already, so I will single crochet across until I get to those chains. When I get to those chains, I'll be working my double crochet. Here we are, we're to the chains, so I have my double crochet in front of those chains. Chain two, skip one, double crochet in front of those chains, chain two, skip one, double crochet in front of those chains, chain two, skip one, double crochet in front of those chains, chain two, skip one, double crochet in front of the chains. Now we single crochet all the way to the end of this row. Chain one, turn your work, work your way back, turn your work, <laughs> look, my diagram is like jumping at me, it's like finish me, all right, so we changed colors, we're back to our blue color, which is row 37 right here. So I will be working single crochets across. There are no chains whatsoever because on row 38, we just single crochet all the way. So I can go ahead and I can cut my color C by my scissors. So I don't have to have it chasing along with me anymore. So color C is done. Put my diagram back up there. I have my color B on my hook and let's let's finish this together. Coming up to my first chains here, so I know I need to work in front of those with the double crochet. And our final row, ladies and gentlemen. Turn my work.
And don't forget, you should have a total of 32 stitches still. And on that last stitch, you can change to your color A. We can cut our color C. Chain one. And now, all I have to do is carry on with my color A to get my divider section here right up here but look how pretty that is so this is technically this is all of section five right here because this is the first these are the first eight rows that's nine and ten um and then this is 11 up until row 38. can you see how cool that looks look how cool that looks oh i think that's so neat Okay, so I truly feel like since I've walked you through section five, you should be able to complete section six without any trouble because as I showed you, it's just taking this one and flipping it upside down. So you should be A-OK -okay and on your way. I am loving all of your work. Again, make sure if you post on Instagram, on Facebook, just about anywhere on social media, use hashtag Marley Bird or hashtag Tournament of Stitches so I can see your work and smash your like button. Be sure to tell your friends that you found this mystery make along and many other free patterns right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel and check out marleybird.com to see what is coming up next. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.